Normally, I would never say this. I've never been much of an advocate for a one, one topic, one issue vote. But it's different this time, isn't it? We've got a vote where somebody may have never voted before in their life. I would say to them, <laughs> this, is the, this is the time for you to vote, right? That's right. Because this issue, if you believe in God, it's very possible that if this nation turns on this issue, that God may have mercy on America, mm, yeah. right? right? What would you say to that? That, oh, you know, Seth, um, I don't know if I'm going to vote. I don't know if my vote matters. And um, one, one issue, really? I can do that? What would you say to somebody? Right. So I always want to get to the status or the heart of the matter, right? The heart of the matter from someone who says that, that I can't vote single issue, at least not on abortion, because we could name other issues that they would become single issue voters right. on. The heart of the matter there is a, either a hard or soft bigotry in how they view unborn children. Either a hard bigotry in the sense that they don't believe they're persons at all and have no right to mm. life whatsoever, and they would call and themselves- And there's pride involved a, in that logic. Absolutely. Gross pride. And they would call themselves a pro-choice activist. That would be a sort of form of hard bigotry. A soft bigotry approach to get to the heart of the matter for someone who would say that would be the kind of personally pro-life individual, and you know people like this. They say mm -hmm. something like this. Yeah. I'm personally pro-life. I wouldn't get an abortion. I don't believe in it but I don't think we should make it illegal. Yeah. I don't think it's my place to legislate to my morality. My exactly. So they have a soft bigotry wow. of the unborn. Why is it a little softer? Because they're granting to some level that the unborn is a human, maybe with some human rights, but not, not to the same degree that I born know, people have. I, right? know that, that, I know that there's a guy in that house that's burning, but right. he's not a very good basketball player. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So we'll just let it go. Yeah, they don't view them as full persons. Same thing. Exactly. So it's a little bit of a softer bigotry. But that's what I want to get at, right? And so that's why I'll use questions like, if you were in 1850 America, would you maintain or suggest that you can't vote for the Republican Party because that would be treating slavery as a litmus test of the republic and therefore well, you would be voting single issue. And of course they would say no. They would say it would be my moral, it would be a moral imperative for me to use my political voice and vote to protect slaves and work to end slavery. So we live in a republic. I love what you just said. We live in a republic. It's 1860. And I have the opportunity to vote, vote for president. I have an opportunity to, once that president's in, right. to influence the vote of to go to war or not. That's right. Do we go to war against the South? Let's vote. Well, where would these people have been on that vote? Right. If they would have said, well, I abstain. I'm going to be quiet on this. Pilot. Right. Well, I don't want to vote for war, because who could be for war, even though the result of the war, if we win, it could set the blacks free. I'm not willing to take that chance. Right. So let's condemn, my, by my apathy, and disengagement, let's condemn the blacks to perpetual slavery. That's right. It is a choice of convenience. That's right. What we're trying to do, I assume, right? We're trying to jar people out of their slumber. Yep. And yeah, exactly. Wake them up that they do not vote feeling or political correctness, but they vote, I mean this, desperately, yeah. like running into that building that's on fire to carry yeah. the guy out on your shoulders. In this case, it is taking a stand finally once and for all and being able to look God in the face on judgment and say, right. I did what I, look, you went to the cross and died for the sins of the world. Right. I went to the voting box and I voted right. to put an end That's right. to this barbaric, barbaric well, and work. These people, politically speaking, and I, you know, this is a heavy phrase, a heavy comment I'm going to make, but politically speaking, these Christians in particular, Pastor Jack, are the Levite and the priest in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yeah, exactly Politically right. speaking, they, they exactly are, because they say, they walk by on the other yeah. side of the road and they go, look, look. a million, bleeding, a million bleeding babies every year, they don't deserve legal protections. Yeah. I've told yeah. pastors, <clears throat> who do you think you are, the Holy Spirit? Oh. Your role is to preach truth, yep. graciously, yep. but truthfully, and leave the results to God. So exactly. this obsession in their own minds right. where they are the ones bringing conviction. Because right. let's be honest, that's, that's the assumption. Because they're saying, if I preach on abortion, I will drive away people who are visiting, who need the gospel, who need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So in other words, you're saying that you have to contrive the situation in which the oh Holy Spirit gosh, brings conviction of sin. If you do that, Unreal. you've got to keep it up. You're the one carrying your church. Yeah. Plus, no way. In the, if, if we don't preach truth for the possibility of offense, you literally just cut the legs off of the Great Commission. You yeah. literally just ruined your church's yep. evangelistic arm yep. because the yep. gospel, when faithfully preached, is offensive. Amen.